Hi, the content of this video can be shocking for most of the students and teachers. We all know the two famous methods for calculating depreciation, straight line and declining balance. But you know what? Most of the students, and with due respect, some teachers calculate it the wrong way. So in this video, I'm going to discuss how to calculate depreciation correctly by straight line method and by declining balance method. And that one point where most of the students and some teachers make a mistake when they're calculating depreciation by declining balance method. So let's understand calculating depreciation by both these methods the right way. Here I have a question. DOP means date of purchase, January 1st, 2015. Cost of the asset is 100,000. Useful life is five years. The year ends on December 31st. Salvage value is 20,000. There are different names for salvage value. You can call it scrap value, residual value, trade-in value, or salvage value. They all mean the same. I have discussed depreciation in detail in two of my videos. One is basic depreciation, the other is on IS-16 revaluation. But the need for this video is because I have come across many students and some teachers and colleagues who makes mistakes, especially in calculating depreciation through declining balance method. So I want you to know it right. So this is the data given to us. So first what I'm going to do is, I'm going to calculate depreciation by straight line method. So I'm writing SLM, that is straight line method. The formula is annual depreciation is equal to cost minus salvage value or scrap value divided by useful life. So if I plug in the numbers here, uh, cost of the asset is 100,000. Salvage value given to us in the question is 20,000. And when you divide by useful life, which is five years, so your annual depreciation comes to 16,000. So if you're talking about five years, every year the depreciation will be 16. So you can multiply by five. So you'll get total depreciation, which will be 80,000. Alternatively, what you can do is you can make a depreciation schedule, which generally I prefer. And I'll tell you why I prefer this schedule. And you have uh, year end, year end. You can write computations here. This is depreciation expense. This is accumulated depreciation. And this is book value or net book value, whatever you call it. So first of all, we write the date of purchase, which is January 1st, 2015. And you write the cost of the machine. Book value means value after depreciation. So on the date of purchase, the cost and the book value is the same because there is no depreciation at that date. Okay. The year ends, the question tells us the year ends on December 31st, 2015. So from January to December is one year and one year annual depreciation we have calculated as 16,000. So depreciation expense is 16,000. Accumulated depreciation is 16. Accumulated in total, 100 minus 16 will give you 84,000. Now this column shows depreciation for the current year. This shows total depreciation so far. So in the first year, both are the same. Next year will end on December 31st, 2016. Annual depreciation is 16,000. So 16 plus 16 is 32. Now from 100, when you minus 32, you get 68,000. Next year will end on December 31st, 2017. Annual depreciation remains 16,000. And this will become 48. So either you add all these three, 16 threes are 48, or 32 and 16 will get 48. From 100 when you minus 48, you will get 52,000. The next year will end on December 31st, 2018. Annual depreciation remains 16,000. Okay. When you add 16 into 4 or 48 in 16, you will get 64,000. Now, 100 minus 64 will give you 36,000. And the last year, December 31st, 2019, annual depreciation remains at 16,000. Now, when you add 64 and 16, that will give you 80,000. And 100 minus 80 will give you 20,000. Hence proof, because it says the machine which you're buying for 100,000, if you use it for five years, 
the salvage value or value at the end of the life will be 20,000. So we purchase a machine for 100,000. We use it for one, two, three, four, five years. Annual depreciation being 16,000. So 16,000 into five gives you total depreciation 80. So 100 minus 80 leaves you with the scrap value of 20,000. This is how we calculate depreciation through straight line method, which is very, very simple. Just in case, when we are talking about straight line method, if a percentage is given, let's say 20%, then depreciation will be 20% of this amount every year. Or if it is 25% or 40%, whatever, if a percentage is given in straight line, that would percentage would be of this cost. Okay, if it says, for example, the, uh, use straight line method, but use 20%. So that 20% would be for 100,000. So 20% of 100,000 will be 20,000. So you'll have depreciation 20,000 every year. And obviously no scrap value in that case. What we have to be very careful about is how to calculate depreciation using declining balance method. Calculating depreciation by declining balance method. There are four names for declining balance method. You can call it declining balance method. You can call it reducing balance method. You can call it net book value method. You can call it written down value method. It's the same. But the very famous one is declining balance method, reducing balance or diminishing balance method. Okay, so most of the time under this method, we are given a percentage. Now let's assume it to be 20%. So for declining balance method, I highly recommend that you make a depreciation schedule similar to this. Okay, so we have one column for book value, one for accumulated depreciation, one for depreciation expense, and there is one for date. Now I want you to focus and be very careful here. So you can write date here if you want to. This is computation. As I said, this is depreciation expense. This is accumulated depreciation and this is net book value or book value. As usual, we write the date of purchase, which is January 1st, 2015 and write the cost of the machine, which is 100,000. Your year is ending on December 31st, 2015. Now this 20% means 20% of this 100,000. So 20% of 100,000 will give you 20,000. Accumulated depreciation is the same. 100 minus 20 will give you 80,000. But the next year ends on December 31st, 2016. The percentage remains the same, 20 upon 100. But now it will be for 80,000. 80,000. So this gives you 16,000. So 20 and 16 is 36 total depreciation. So 100 minus 36 will give you 64,000. Next year, December 31st, 2017, again, the percentage remains the same, 20 upon 100 into 64,000. That's why we call it declining balance method. See the balance is declining on this, I'm taking 80. Now from 80, it became 64, I'm taking 20% of 64. So this will be 12,800. So 36 plus 12,800 will give us 48,800. And when I subtract from 100,000, 48,800, I get 51,200. Next year end, December 31st, 2018, 20% remains the same into 51,200. This will give you 10,240. You have to add 48,800 and 10,240, which will give you 59,040. Subtract from 100,000, you will get 40,960. What most of the students, and with due respect, some of the teachers do. So what they do is, next year ends on December 2019. They take 20% of 40,960, which is wrong. In the last year, we have to adjust the depreciation. Now, let me show you how we adjust. So in the last year, what you have to do is, the question says, there is a scrap value after five years. So if you look at this, one, two, three, four. Now we're coming to the fifth year. After fifth year, 
scrap value should be 20,000. So I'm writing here 20,000. This is the adjustment. Now look, 100 minus 59 give you 40. 100 minus how much should give you 20? So obviously it has to be 80,000. 100 minus 80, only then you'll get 20,000. So if that is the case here, normally we, look, we had 20 plus 16, we get 36. 36 plus 12,000, we get 48,800. 48,800 plus 10,240, we got this. So 59,040 plus how much should give you 80? So, so what you have to do is 80 minus 59, you'll get depreciation for the current year, which is the adjusted depreciation. So 80,000 minus 59,040 will give you 20,960. So now the equation works. 59 plus 20,960 is 80, 80 minus 100 is 20,000. And that's what the question says. At the end of the useful life, whether it be straight line method or declining balance method, salvage value should be 20,000. I hope you have understood this. Now I'm giving an exam tip. Now you have understood to calculate depreciation by declining balance method. This schedule is very important because you need depreciation for the current year. You also need accumulated depreciation and you need book value for each year. But sometimes in examination, you are asked through declining balance method, let's say directly depreciation of the third year, which is this amount, which is this amount. So instead of making the entire table, there is a shortcut which I suggest and that will save you a lot of time. So let's see how the shortcut is used. So if you're using the shortcut, please understand our aim is to calculate depreciation for any of the years using declining balance method rather than making the entire table. So what you can do is we are talking about the entire table, but we are not filling these lines. We are not filling these columns. Okay. So shortcut is year one, which is December 31st, 2015. How we can calculate depreciation? 20% of 100,000. So your depreciation for the first year is 20,000. Now look at the percentage, how much it is? 20% next year, December 31st, 2016. Total percentage is 100, this is 20. You take 80%, 80% of this amount. This will give you depreciation 16,000. Can you see this? Now if you want to go to next year, December 31st, 2007, take 80% of 16,000 you'll get 12,800 so rather than adding and subtracting and taking the last amount and taking 20% I am taking 80% of depreciation at expense itself so another one let's look at this instead of 20 take 80% of 12,800 you will get 10,240 Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have understood. Generally, we calculate like this. First, we need to have depreciation expense accumulated, subtract from the cost, you will get book value. Once you have a book value, take the book value and 20% have the current year depreciation. Add these two, you get accumulated. Accumulated when you minus from 100,000, you get 64. Once you have 64, only then you can take 20% of 64 to get annual depreciation. So I'm not using, so I'm not doing all the steps. What I'm doing is only the first year, I'm going to take 20%, which is given in the question of the cost. Once I get my annual depreciation, this is my depreciation expense, which is annual depreciation. Next year, instead of 20, I'll take the remaining 80. And instead of book value, I will take this amount and take 20%. Uh, so now I have depreciation expense for all the year 2015, 2016, 17 and 18. So I hope you have understood all the differences, whether it is straight line method or declining balance method. One more thing I need to tell you is sometime in declining balance method, they don't give you the percentage. If they don't give you the percentage, one quick way is you just take 100 divide by life in years. How much is the life in years? Five. So divide by five, you get 20%. Sometime in declining balance method, they say use, they say use double declining balance method double declining balance method and they don't give you the rate at all so first you find the percentage that is 100 divided by life in years you get 20 if you get 20 multiply by 2 so 
20 multiplied by 2 in double declining balance method you will be using 40% rate if life in years is something else you write 100 let's say it's 4 years so divide by 4 you get 25% and in double declining balance method you multiply by 2 so you use 50% in declining balance method so guys if you have any question relating to calculating depreciation in straight line method or using declining balance method please feel free to leave a comment if you like my video please share it with the dear and near ones so that others can also benefit if you're not yet subscribed please subscribe my channel and press the bell notification button so that you get my videos on a timely basis thank you so very much for your precious time love you all